data revealing a disturbing trend among the city's carjackings. The majority of them are being carried out by juveniles. WGN's Dana Rebick is live in South Shore where a suspect in a recent carjacking isn't even old enough to drive. Mm. Is that right, Dana? That's right. And by several years, uh, police here in Chicago believe that this recent carjacking suspect could be a South Shore elementary school student. And today we spoke with friends of one of the victims uh, that he attacked late last week. OK, these are friends of the victim. So the person who this kid punched in the face and stole their car, they're talking to her fucking friends. It is uh, somebody who's a neighbor to this garden. So that hit us especially hard, but all of this is hitting especially hard. An attempted carjacking in South Shore. The victim, a woman in her 50s, approached by an offender around midnight Friday in the 7000 block of South Merrill. She came face to face with a young boy that couldn't be any more than 10 or 11. And there was actually no feeling in his face or in his energy. And that I think was the most disturbing thing to her. They punched her in the face and she wasn't able to get out the car quickly to defend herself because she still had her seatbelt on. Chicago police sent out a community alert Sunday. Half an hour before this incident, CPD says someone grabbed the victim's keys nearby in the 2100 block of East 70th Street, taking their vehicle. Both incidents happening within blocks of O'Keefe Elementary School. We just have to feel sad that these kids are in this situation. Yes. We just have to feel sad that these kids are in this situation. I told you, these are horrible people. All of these people deserve ridicule and condemnation. These are not good people. Salute to CA. What percentage of the population in this city his sons under the age of 18. Look what such a tiny percentage is capable of. If that's it, that city might be 10% sons under 18, and of that, nine could probably be, nine could probably be son, son teen males. So, Male son teens, probably nine, eight, nine percent of the population of Chicago. Listen to what this. Well, listen to what this woman who got punched in the face and got her car stolen. Listen to what her fucking friend has to say elementary school we just have to feel sad that these kids are in this situation yes and we have been working very diligently in this neighborhood everything's free we try to provide the most fun programming that we can and everything's free <laughs> everything's free and make sure you hit the paypal cash app super chat support the channel everything's free to these sun teams. We they they got all types of amenities. They got a fucking garden here. If you want to be a, if you're in the farming, you can fucking farm in the middle of Chicago if you're a sun team for free. They got fucking studios, music studios for them to fucking make music at. You want to be a fucking artist? You got fucking tons of classes in computer, computer graphics. Artists from the community to come work with you and shit. Everything's free. We got a gazillion programs and they're all free. Trying to bribe the little sun teens. She just doesn't understand that they, they're doing what they love. They're enjoying themselves. They're doing what they love. Let me drop the link, man. They're doing what they love, you fucking shit stain these people are dreadful god these people are terrible that 84 year old white man 
Imagine what she said to that fucking guy who shot Ralph y'all. Imagine what she said about that guy. Imagine what she said about the fucking goddamn somebody who said something to some son teen at some time or some son fucking some person that said something to another son teen that they didn't like or some pick a fucking scandal, racial scandal in this fucking country. Imagine what she said about it. Some old bullshit racial scandal. She probably was fucking in tears, man. What's up, man, conservative, man? What's going on? What's going on, man? Ain't nothing, man. This shit's crazy, man. <laughs> this shit's crazy, shit. Yeah, they're accomplices. These are fucking accomplices. She's accomplices. She's just as dangerous as... She's just as dangerous, and I'm not letting the fucking sun team off the hook. I'm not saying it's her fault. I'm saying she's just as dangerous as that little fucker that snatches you out of your car. No, real shit. To feel sad. Yeah, man. Listen it's, like, to it's, like, it's like a cycle and shit. You know what I mean, it's like, this shit's crazy, man. Listen to what the fuck this fucking um, monster says. We just have to feel <laughs> sad that these kids are in this situation. Yes, and we have been working very diligently in this neighborhood. Everything's free. We try to provide the most fun programming that we can. And you're free to take it if you want to. Natalie Perkins. <laughs> she's wild. She's giving these, they, they give these sun teens, every, everything's free. Yeah, I heard that everything was for free. She said everything's free. She's. HVAC, you want to get an HVAC, they got an HVAC program. All your black ass got to do is go down there. <laughs> You can get a H. You can get HVAC certificate. CDL. You want CDL? It's free to get a fucking CDL. You want to um? It is giving those be a barber. Yeah, that's just crazy. You want to do hair? You want to be a fucking music producer? Every fucking thing. You want to be a chef? They got all types of programs out here for these fuckers. Yeah, man, it's just, it's just wild, man. It's and I mean. We had programs too, and we same shit, man. After school programs, boys and girls clubs, the Y, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, all that shit, man. Still the same shit to this day. None of that shit's working. None of that shit. None of that shit works, man. (laughs) 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 Fuck it, like I mean, like it's just sad, man. No one, no one wants to say that shit, man. This shit is fucking <laughs> sad, man. It's fucking sad. It literally, it should, it should, it should make you fucking tear up, man, for how fucking sad this shit is, man. Um, these fuckers, um, god damn, man, these pieces of shit. Look, look at this shit, um. <laughs> These people are superstars for, for, for programs. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> so we have talked about it a lot here. More than ever, young people are struggling with mental health. Um, it's All of us are, really. Um, it's one reason we love highlighting unique ways communities are helping kids build their confidence. So I want to tell you about a super cool program in Chicago called Cirque Esteem that's using circus arts to help kids build their sense of self-worth. Check it out. Ready. We use circus as a tool for youth development. Our mission is to unite youth across all backgrounds and foster self-esteem through the practice and performance of circus arts. Oh my gosh, I did it! For some kids, it's a place where they can come and just be in a warm building. For some kids, it's a place for them to grow artistically and athletically. I love that, like how at circus, there's no need to hide your inner self. You can basically be whoever you want to be. Everyone is just so loving and supportive. And it's a break from being in high school all day where people can be mean and not always most welcoming. I've grown through circus <laughs> team. I've learned how to be caring, open-minded, and just in general, just learned how to love and accept. It's mostly white kids there, right? Yeah, I just peeped that shit. <laughs> white kids is going down there, but the fucking black kids is... 
Now look at her. She black as hell. You, you is she down there? You telling me? I don't hear shit about racism. I don't hear shit about racism, man. Because you know what the black is? We don't feel comfortable in certain spaces. You mean to tell me one of these motherfuckers? You from fucking Chicago? One of these motherfuckers right here? These people terrified of you. These people, <laughs> these people ain't gonna fucking make you feel uncomfortable. Some something I felt uncomfortable down there because somebody said something, but well, they wasn't talking to me, but I overheard them talking about something else. And because they said real shit, that, it real shit. It is. And it made me think of that. And I thought about this. And then, then I said, this little man, they got to come with all type of excuses. If you a fucking son, T, you welcome anywhere on God's green earth, man. It's most welcoming. I've grown through service team. I've learned how to be caring, open-minded, and just in general, just learned how to love and accept everyone else. Circus team has boosted my confidence. Without them, I wouldn't be the person I am now. Our city, yeah. beyond their own neighborhood, beyond Chicago. This week's change maker is working to change that, taking them beyond their streets, beyond their city, and even outside the country. I want you to meet Crystal Dyer, who runs a nonprofit, Chicago Austin Youth Travel Adventures. Crystal, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also, Drina. I'm so happy you're here to talk about a program that you started in 2015. This was for at-risk youth and teens. It started on the west side of Chicago. What what did you see? What did you hear that you said, I got to start this program? Well, in 2011, Adrena, my grandson uh, was murdered mm. five days. <laughs> of course. That's crazy. Of course. I mean, <laughs> of course. Well, in 2011, Adrena, my grandson uh, was murdered mm. five days after his 18th birthday. Uh, he was an aspiring event planner. He had traveled, you know, I'm his grandma, you know, and his father uh, owned his own business. So he was an aspiring entrepreneur. And I went to a birthday party and, you know, and then violence erupted. He had just got there. Violence erupted. <laughs> yeah, just just erupted just out of nowhere. Boom. Out of nowhere, yeah. <laughs> if, a, if a white man had fucking said if a white man had said boo to her fucking son and he was still alive 11 years ago and they were asking her about, hey, um, you recall that time that white man said boo to your grandson? She would be in fucking tears. And she'd be fucking calling that white man all types of yeah, shit. Real shit. She'd be talking about the state of the country, how the Fabric of America is rooted in racism. racism, and how racism. Everything's fucked up from the core, from the rooter to the tutor, and it's irredeemable, and you can't fix it. You you talk about her fucking son getting his fucking brains blown out of the fucking birthday party, and she calls it violence erupted. These people are terrible. Oh man. His father uh, owned his own business, so he was an aspiring entrepreneur. And I went to a birthday party, and you know, and then violence erupted. He just <laughs> got there; he didn't even know what happened. So I saw that, and I said, "God help me! You know, what do I need to help these children not be, you know, so, so sensitive? You know, they they uh, the mental health issues that they have that stem from something else, and." something as simple as at that party somebody wouldn't play a song mm. and and they got mad and came back and shot the party up <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. or a speaker falls over she's bullshit but she's bullshit <laughs> bullshit her son uh, I mean, her grandson died because somebody wouldn't play a song yeah she's bullshit you don't believe that i believe that no, no, no. I'm saying like the, the whole story. Like he came in and he just came there, and I don't believe. I believe he knew the time it was. Like he was, in, he was part of the party and all that shit, man. I don't believe he just came in. The party just erupted and started shooting. I know shit like that happened, but I think she's bullshitting. It. Like so she don't make him look like he's a bad guy and shit. Well, either way, whatever happened, that story sounds plausible. That sounds very plausible. Oh the music! Oh the music part with the the um yeah that's just yeah, definitely that sounds very plausible. That actually sounds like like listen for all the reasons we see parties get shot up. That seems like it might be on the far end of the spectrum. That might be like a 
a legit reason in Pakistan. Yeah. Hey, man. I mean, yeah, that's kind of mundane week, at this point. Just yeah, straight down the middle. Last, yeah, considering what happened last week, that did I mean, shit. I mean, yeah, he, he might have been justified. And I said, 89 God, help me. you know, what do I need to help these children not be, you know, so, so sensitive? You know, they, they, uh, the mental health issues that they have that stem from something else and something as simple as at that party somebody wouldn't play a song mm. and and they got mad and came back and shot the party up one of the things that i truly believe is that the more that we can expose our kids to mm -hmm. the, the bigger they can dream the bigger they can believe how did you implement that when it comes to saying i need to take them to places even beyond chicago well, you know, being a travel agent at this point for 24 years, you know, I saw the impact uh, not only on my children, but, you know, on other youth and families, period, you know, because a lot of the adults had never realized their dreams. And so I say, let me take this and apply it to the youth. And we started with cultural immersion excursions, as I call them, right here in Chicago, to cultural centers. So then they can see, you know, how. These look like little kids on fucking Sally Struthers commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Only if thing you listen to me. For the price of a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Only you you too can sponsor belly. a little umbupu. All they need is a big belly, man. A big belly. Yeah, they had little pot belts and some eye flies. With some little yeah, ass flies. All we need is some fucking flies and mosquitoes swarming around. <laughs> this looks like it's hey, fucking. Yeah, you ain't shit. <laughs> this looks like it's one of them fucking UNICEF commercials, man. <laughs> Yo, what happened to them, what happened to them commercials from back in the days? What happened to them? Yeah, man, they probably said them shits was racist or some shit. Like that. <laughs> Yeah, well, didn't you see what happened to that woman? She got fat as shit. She was the only one getting food. Yeah, oh, shit. Salute to, uh, salute to <laughs> Doug S., man. Doug S. says, who's worse, in your opinion? Please put them in order. Rashad, the fraud, Richie, Al Sharpton, Michael, Eric Dyson, Mark Lamar Hill, <laughs> Ali Style. I think Ali Mistyle is the worst one, man. That fucking Q-tip looking fuck fat fucking Q-tip looking motherfucker on MSNBC. He's the worst. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. So, so shout out to Aster J. But Aster J says the only one group of teens you have to do all this shit for. Yeah, man. These kids are getting free trips now, man. <laughs> listen, man. I, listen, man. I do. I travel a lot, but that that should be like business. My wife and shit, business and shit. I ain't took a trip that wasn't business trip in fucking years, man. These little fucking gremlins get the fucking. <laughs> ain't worth a day in their fucking life. Shit, man. Oh shit. Listen, man, and, and I get it, man. I, I'm, I'm not. I, I, I get it. Their parents ain't shit, but goddamn, man, like, stop telling us how fucking this event. This shit is free. Yeah. This, this woman is taking these kids around the fucking country or the world for free. And we started with cultural immersion excursions, as I call them, right here in Chicago, <laughs> to cultural centers. So then they can see, you know, how every culture lives. Because in a segregated community, you know, Chinese, you know, Hispanic, uh, Lithuanian or whatever, you may not live next door to someone of another. That's Africa. Damn. Where's these places? Where's this place right here? Anybody know where this is? Cause I know this is this is Africa where they bound in the yams. Where are these places? Anybody? Somebody tell me where these places are. Anybody in the chat know? Well, this is landmark right here. I don't know these places. You said, you know, Hispanic, uh, Lithuanian, or whatever. You may not live next door to someone of another culture. So that first opened their eyes and said, wow, you know, we're all alike. You know, we're not different. We all have struggles. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me you went yeah, to Haiti. Yeah, you're all you alike. Went to, you went to Haiti and went to Japan and said we weren't different. <laughs> 
Real shit. <laughs> Real fuck? shit. You know what the Iceland and then what the fucking goddamn Monrovia Liberia and you your 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 fucking analysis is that we all the same. Get the fuck out of here, man. You know, we're all alike. You know, we're not different. We all have struggles. And then to take them from there and then take them on an international flight to another country, I mean, it was, you know, it's just all inspiring. It really gave them that thrust they needed to really see their futures and move forward. Tell me about this trip to Ghana in West Africa. I mean, to take kids from here in Chicago that far away, it wasn't just about exposing them to a new place, but also culture, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, we had uh, this last trip, we were there for uh, f 14 days. Wow. So hey. we traveled all over the country, experienced all different types of uh, adventures and, and then entertainment and culture. I even had a professor from a university come out and he explained each day before they went on their tour what they were going to experience. So that way they had a full immersion of how things you know, work in this culture versus what they knew here in America. Okay, we have about 30 more seconds. So I want you to share the a goal of yours to raise even more funds and support to get, is it 180 kids to new places in the next two years? Yes, definitely, mm. definitely. So, yeah, so we're on this mission to take- White people, a hey, white folk in Chicago, man. Get your fucking checkbooks ready, man. <laughs> you about to so tax the fuck up. Yeah, this is gonna be y'all's money, man. Trust me, it's gonna be y'all money. <laughs> Take and it's over not a bad drift, but it's out of this country so then they can have this experience and then they can bring it back and then also share it with their family, their classmates, and so forth. So to raise the funds to do this, you know, it's life changing for these kids. And like I say, the mental health aspect, that's the true picture of this. Yeah, well, yes. that is so amazing. Oh, fucking Christ. How many of these trips are you SCS. going on, ma'am? All of them, I would guess. My job, my yeah, I think she's the, she's going to be the chaperone. Look at look yeah. at all the shit. Travel the world for free. Why not? My Jai, My Future is a citywide initiative connecting teens to out-of-school experiences and opportunities. Amy Eshelman, the First Lady of Chicago, joins us now with an exciting new update on this initiative. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm so this glad. This is Lori Lightfoot's wife, the First Lady of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, white chick. Yeah. No cap. She's is that a joke? Every, she's every, no, she's every bit of 6'9". I promise you. If she, if she ain't 6'9", she's 6'8". This whore is big. You hear me? Yeah, she's tall as shit. Amy Eshelman, the First Lady of Chicago, joins us now with an exciting new update on this initiative. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad to be back. Yes. It's yes. really great. Thank you for having me. This is a great next step in your yes. program for kids. So tell us a little bit about it. So My Shine My Future is two years old today. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. And we are so excited to be able to announce that we now have my Shine My Future available on a mobile device. My Shine My Future app launches today. Go on the Google Play Store or the App Store and you can find over 7,000 programs for young people across the city. And what's so exciting about this app is that young people helped in its development. And it's cool. really perfect pairing because my shy my future is about the kids and if you want them to get involved you got to speak their language and what better language to speak than an app on a phone exactly we have to show up where young people show up that means all over the city but that also means it on a mobile device we know especially over the pandemic that young people were connected to everything um, online yeah and accessed programs. They don't go to websites, they go to apps. And so we think Chicago has the first of its kind out of school time app in the country. We're so proud of that. That is amazing. And, and talking about meeting kids where they are, there are so many programs out there that kids probably don't even realize they can get involved in. That's yeah. right. And what's so great about this app is you can put in your interests, 
So it will filter by interest. It will filter by your location. Okay. So if you are in Englewood, it will show you programs around Englewood. If you're in South Shore, if you're in Austin, it will um, move with you. All the data stays on the phone. It's not connected to, it's not sharing data with anybody else. Okay. Um, but young people can, if they choose, say, hey, I'm into this uh art making program okay. I can share this out with my friends they can join me yeah. um, so it works like all the other really great apps around on the app store so what type of programs are on my shy my future so the city has its programs for youth on the app parks libraries um, family and support service so everything's free man there's nothing to fucking there's no you they don't want for anything anything and i didn't even show you any of the sports programs if you want to be a fucking movie tie kickboxer or fucking play fucking badminton or water polo they got a program for that shit too these people fucking are living good salute to gary thomas he says mammy's just like her don't understand no matter how hard you try at the end of the day some words are going to some words <laughs> Yeah, man. No shit. Stop feeling sorry for these people. These people have more shit than you do. Okay. Newsflash. These kids have more shit than you do. Way more shit than you do. You buy groceries, right? Their mother get a fucking food stamp card. You pay rent, right? Their mama's on Section Eight. She got a five bedroom in a in, in next door to you for fucking sixteen dollars a month. <laughs> Facts. But when you shit's crazy, man. <laughs> well, when you take flight, you often see male pilots in the cockpit, right, yeah, but yeah. now there's a push to get more women, African-Americans, and other minorities into the aviation field. And today, about 500 students are attending the first annual Youth Aviation Day at Wendell Phillips High School. And joining us now... Yay! Chicago teens are soon going to be flying your, your planes. How's, how's this making all you feel? Pick <laughs> one if you want a fucking Chicago or fucking Sun team <laughs> flying you around the country, man. <laughs> Now is Barbara Elzey, the founder and CEO of the She Flies Aviation Program. Good morning to you, Barbara. Good morning. Good morning. So to start, let's talk about what this program is all about. So She Flies Aviation Program is exactly what you just said, Brian. It is to expose the young ladies to aviation. And sure enough, uh, the young men can take part of it as well. But we're exposing them to aviation careers, aerospace, aeronautics, as well as STEM programs. So I wanted to bring this program into the schools so the students can get an up close and personal look at the careers of aviation and hear it from recruiters and see uh, female pilots and all of the esteemed guests that are gonna be there today to share the vast world of aviation. And Barbara, exposure is so important as we know, but why is it so critical yes. at this age for these high school students and, and even younger, really? Because you know what, Ryan, I think that I want them to see this. I, I, I'm for all the other careers, but I think it's important to put things before our young people to give them the idea or even the mindset that I can do this. And that's my purpose as to why I want to expose the youth in the Chicagoland area as well as the surrounding suburbs to see this up close and personal to say, you know, aviation is not just about baggage or going through security and all of that, but there's a many careers that they can be a part of. And I want them to know that and also may make a decision that they want to go into aviation as you I mean, that ain't teaching these fuckers how to fly planes and shit. I mean, but they still want to fucking punch you, punch old ladies in the face and take their cars. I have no sympathy for them. Everything is at their fingertips and they still choose to run around and punch old ladies in the face and take their cars. 
make sure I said both of your name correctly because names are important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect. So we're gonna start with you, Mariah. Can you tell us more about the program, what the mission is and what, Yeah. and do you enjoy it? I mean, why are you still part of it? Well, I enjoy like being able to like hang out with people, like learning to do jewelry and like we just get like rewarded for doing it. Yeah. yeah. They get to learn how to you do make jewelry. They have programs where they teach you how to fucking make jewelry. That's crazy. Look at this shit. You can and you can sell your jewelry. You could they they give you all the materials. They give you all the fucking fucking trinkets and fucking sapphires and fucking rubies. That shit all costs money, man. Teach you how to make the shit and then let you sell it and keep the fucking money. <laughs> And they'll take you to the fucking events because you, you you can take you to these fairs and these expos so you can go fucking sell the shit and make money. And, 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 and but instead they want to fucking punch old ladies in the face and take their cars. Right, like um, sometimes like going downtown for the first time. Right, you might live in Chicago, but you've never actually like. Yeah gone downtown so it's super that's a lie we saw a bunch of them fucking sun teens downtown a couple weeks ago. yeah it was like 200 of them motherfuckers. yeah see how they lie most me and chicago teens have never been downtown shut the fuck up it is a community center unlike any we've seen before a nearly 100 year old church now converted to serve homeless young people on chicago's south side staff at the light collective are hoping to help young people get on their feet and set them up for a brighter futures. CBS 2's Marissa Perlman is live there now. Marissa, mm -hmm. they're planning to change lives and change their neighborhood. Yeah, that's right, Jim. This isn't your traditional homeless outreach program. Exhibit A, there is ping pong, games, music, and a playroom for little kids. And this organization <laughs> is hoping to meet those young people exactly where they are. In Chicago's Greater Grand Crossing neighborhood, you'll find this, a nearly 100-year-old, formerly vacant church that's gone through quite the makeover. We are in the kitchen. This. Yeah, and that's where, that's where we can find you most of us. <laughs> you ain't no surprise. You ain't shit. You feel like a fucking Easter egg. No surprise there, man. That's gone through quite the makeover. We are in the kitchen. This is our great gym. This is Light's art room. It's been transformed. The 11,000 square foot space is officially the Light Lounge. Yo, this, looks like, yo, this is like a dream bachelor's pad. Like if, if any fucking dude could make a fucking crib, this is what it would look like. That's for free. Like your dream, this looks like the, the crib out of your dream. But space is officially the light lounge, a center for younger people dealing with homelessness <laughs> or poverty. This is amazing. Tanka Bradford, you'll find at the front desk. Yeah, those will be there a long time. <laughs> Look at that fucking guitar, man. Look at this equipment they got. Yeah, that's some money right there, man. That's a $500 <laughs> Gibson. You said how much $100? I said for at least a five hundred dollar Gibson right that there in the background. That little five hundred dollar, you couldn't rent that for five hundred dollars, man. <laughs> Real shit. What are you talking about? What <laughs> five hundred? Dude, listen, man. It's firsthand how hard it is to get help. Just four years ago, she was homeless. For her, working with social services. Now here's wasn't the thing. Easy. This is what homeless people in America look like. Okay. This is what homeless people go to them other countries. We did, what, remember Cairo last night. Them little skinny little boys on the street, motherfuckers. Them little skinny little fucking skeleton boys they had running <laughs> around the street. Listen, this is what homeless people look like in America. So this is the starting point. He was homeless. For her, working with social services wasn't easy. When I was in the shelter that I was in. Um, she's cute though. I seen so much, and I was like, "This could she's be better." Since 2015, yeah, small she she big boned though. I wouldn't want her to lose too much weight because then the skin would be hanging off. 
Yeah. If she 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 gotta get she gotta lose the weight and then have the skin removed a little bit of the skin removed and she'll be cute man. Much and I was like, this could be better. Since 2015, the Small Light Collective team has worked out of their cars, strictly mobile services, meeting people where they were. Well, we would go to McDonald's or a school or a park, and if someone said we need diapers, you know. We will meet at a cafe. They knew they needed a home base to offer support. Uh, and in 2017, they found the church. The one. Did you see that arm? Dude? Yeah, man, it might be. It, it, it might be. That took <laughs> me by surprise, brother. I, I was like, holy shit, she's flat. Yeah. We might not somebody be already to... let the air out of her. Hey, you can't save everybody, man. <laughs> it's like a flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some kids probably can't like afford nothing or get much on Christmas Day and like they won't feel left out. <laughs> A special holiday tradition in full swing tonight in the loop. And it's all for some deserving kids. Elizabeth Matthews got to join in the fun. This is a 20 year tradition, giving the kids a little bit of independence and letting them come downtown and experience the holidays. The festive lights, the packed sidewalks, and the shopping on State Street. 125 kids from Austin arrived on school buses to shop till they drop. They let us like. <laughs> so they take these motherfuckers shopping, man. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie, right? But when I be hearing like these kids or, or like these people talking about like these kids don't got nothing or like just be bullshit because like back in our days, like the young kids. Ain't living like how these kids are moving these days. Like they be they scared. These kids actually have money, dress better, and they making it seem like these kids are poor and they not doing shit. This is crazy, man. This shit is crazy. Even if they're poor, everything's free. So you, what does it matter if you're poor if everything's free? <laughs> <laughs> it only matters if shit costs something. Yeah, everything's free. <laughs> Real shit. Real shit. Yeah, once everything has no value. Just crazy, man. This is on State Street. 125 kids from Austin arrived on school buses to shop till they drop. They let us like walk around, see what we like around here. More than 500 kids this week are hitting State Street thanks to the after school program by the hand. The tradition of Christmas in the city allows each kid a Visa gift card to shop with and a McDonald's gift. <laughs> a visa they, each kid gets a Visa shit. They do that shit in my area too. They do shit in my area too. No bullshit. <laughs> they give these now, kids Visa that, gift cards. That shit sounds really bad, right? But it could be like a it's probably whoever started probably had good intentions they put each kid gets 20 bucks or something or 100 bucks maybe yeah. i don't know how much it's, it's more it's more than 20 bucks because they get they give them more than 20 bucks it's like a few different gift cards to like different stores for so groceries clothing and yeah. like yeah like they're that. kids man it ain't like they fucking got like they, they don't need like a fucking thousand dollar gift card man. they're fucking kids whatever they give them is fucking bonus man